YouTube as it going the goat house is back with the Minnesota Vikings preview a team that I think people are expecting to struggle because their questions at quarterback maybe a little bit of a work in progress and that is definitely possible but if you evaluate this team that they have quite a bit of talent and they may just have too much talent for them to struggle but we will see we're going to break it down here a bunch of things to watch when it comes to Minnesota we have now done every single NFL team in this series you can find a playlist on the channel and find your team but to the Vikings top three things I'm watching for number three which might be the number one thing for most people quarterback it's a big thing to watch for, but the reason it's not number one is whether it's Sam Darnold or JJ McCarthy, I think we're going to get around the same thing. You know, I think we'll get decent quarterback play, not awful, not great, not Kirk Cousins, obviously. Um, but it, I am curious to how they handle the situation. Last year was definitely a, a mess after Kirk Cousins got injured and you switching quarterbacks like crazy. So eh, that's the good thing here. Like they, you may look at it as they lost Kirk. They went Kirk Cousins to Darnold and McCarthy. They got worse. Technically, you're right. But last year they didn't have Kirk Cousins for most of the season, and it was a disaster. They actually got better compared to to Dobbs, uh, Jaron Hall, and, and Nick Mullins, which they had at the end of the year, and they were still pretty competitive. I mean, think about what Nick Mullins was in games against the Lions, both times against the Lions, and they kind of just fell short. A team that went to the NFC title game. So if you look at it that way, it's like, all right, you know, if they were competing last year and now the quarterback situation is a little more, I guess, calm, um, could they be better? But yeah, I'm also, you know, looking at Sam Darnold, very curious to how he could play. It feels like he could be the starter right now, but I mean, people were very high on him. I wasn't that high on, on him, so I wasn't super surprised with the struggles early on, but I didn't really think he had a too fair of a go at it. I mean, the Jets with Adam Gase, you know, hearing some stories now about how bad Gase was, we know how bad he was. Uh, still, quarterback decides a lot a lot of his own fate there. He did not play well. And then with the Panthers and their, you know, their struggles. And then he was with the 49ers last year, which you could say is a good situation for a backup because he didn't get to play. Uh, but now it goes in as a possible starter for the Vikings. Really good receivers and improving offensive line. Really good tight end as well. They have more of a running game now. Um, Kevin O'Connell, really good offensive mind specifically for, for the pass game, for quarterbacks, being a former quarterback himself. So this is easily the best situation for Sam Darnold. So it's kind of boom or bust for this is it. This is it for Sam Darnold. And maybe he doesn't even get the chance to start, but it sound, it feels like he will right now. Hearing really good things from training camp. Uh, very early stage of that. No pads. Obviously, they have helmets on, but he's throwing the ball pretty well. He has some really good targets. So, And then if J.J. McCarthy gets in there, you know, winner, smart quarterback, uh, you know, I think he has a little bit more to his game than, you know, just being part of a run-first offense. So, uh, we'll see. Very curious situation there in Minnesota. Everyone's curious because, you know, who starts as the rookie start, and they have a pretty good roster outside of that. So who's going to get this opportunity? Uh, number two, I think it would be actually a surprise if this if this defense wasn't the number one blitzing defense. Is it going to be the number one defense? No, not saying that. Probably not even close. But under Brian Flores, it should be a pretty decent defense. But in terms of blitzing defense, it should be number one. It was up there last year. Brian Flores finds very unique ways to get after the quarterback involving the blitz, different types of blitzes. Uh, I think we could see some simulated pressure as well, uh, you know, with them. And, and I mean, factoring in the edge rushers, you know, which really aren't the blitzers, of course, but you have what we expect the starters to be Jonathan Grenard and Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner's a guy that can drop in coverage, which is huge for the blitz because you could send somebody else in. And then you have Andrew Van Ginkle, um, who you can do different things with familiar with Brian Flores defense was really good down the stretch for the Dolphins last year I can see all three of those edge rushers uh, you know in there at the same time and then you have yeah linebacker Ivan Pace Jr. who's a big time blitzer was at Cincinnati was last year for Minnesota uh, they had the most the two safeties with the most blitz attempts in the NFL Josh Metellus and Harrison Smith no other safeties blitz more than those guys so um, yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. I, I, the different looks they're going to give, the different blitzes, how much they're going to blitz. So that's going to be pretty fun. It's really going to throw teams off. The Really the only worry with that defense is kind of a big one at the cornerback position. I'm good with Byron Murphy, but after that, they are a little thin. 
and they've lost some guys unfortunately recently. Do they bring somebody in? They 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 may. Uh, they may have to bring someone in that could actually better them depending on who that guy is, whether it's a veteran that's still available or, uh, you know, somebody uh, through trade, perhaps Lattimore is getting thrown out that, you know, that maybe it's a little unlikely at this point, but can't rule it out. Uh, but yeah, does the blitz end up being not as much of a factor because the corners are allowing such early and easy and early se- separation? That's possible, but um, they have pretty good pass rushers. Again, they could use three at the same time like we talked about. Uh, Flores is going to get very creative, and they're going to send Pace. They're going to send Harrison Smith. They're going to send Metellus. Um, so the team's got to worry about that You know, when, when preparing for the, for, for the Vikings defense and um, pre-snap, just trying to figure out. I, I think the really good quarterbacks will, will figure it out, and if they and if they – do that they're going to beat the blitz pretty good and it's going to kind of expose that defense but uh, I, I think uh, any other type of quarterback I think could really struggle against this defense and yeah very curious about the edge rotation too I kind of talked about that but you know they lost Daniel Hunter who was their star edge rusher they do not have a Daniel Hunter out there anymore but they are actually deeper have a better rotation Jonathan Grenard has been really solid for the Texans Dallas Turner was a really good draft pick from from Alabama and a guy that has been very productive and has the ability to drop in coverage, so I think he'll be very effective for them. And Andrew Van Ginkle, again, familiar with Flores' defense, was very productive at the end of last year for the Dolphins. There And Patrick Jones is pretty solid. They add Jihad Ward, Jihad Ward um, from the Giants. Um, and they have some other guys that could step up. Andre Carter, Gabriel Murphy was probably the best undrafted free agency signing there was. So they, they are actually pretty damn deep when it comes to the edge group. So combine that with the Blitz. They might win some football games off that alone. It's just being a problem. So, um, But I do worry about the cornerback position in, in maybe the D-tackle spot next to Harrison Phillips. Uh, but the linebacker group, they add Blake Cashman at linebacker so uh, as well next to Ivan Pace Jr. So Brian Flores should have this defense playing very well. It's a unique defense, so that, that definitely could be a factor, something that's, you know, that gets you kind of excited to, to watch for. Uh, and then number one, they actually have more of a balanced offense. They lose Kirk Cousins, but like we talked about, they didn't have him as it was throughout most of last year. But even if, let's say they had him, it feels a little more balanced right now. And that is due to running back, the running game, adding Aaron Jones. Now the big thing is, yeah, Aaron Jones can't really play an entire season. So does he miss games here and there? It's definitely possible, but... Um, it's a major upgrade in terms of running back for them. Last year it was a disaster. I mean, it just it helps the offense in general. Of course, everybody knows if you have a successful run game, it can open up the passing game. It kind of keeps the defense guessing, keeps them on their toes. So that's one. But I, I think Kevin O'Connell and his play calling, I think his job gets a lot easier. There were so many scenarios. If you watch Vikings games last year, you know what I'm talking about. There were so many scenarios where they had short yardage to go. You know, third and one, two, whatever. It's a situation where you should run the ball, but it was a lot of just overthinking, maybe because O'Connell knew how much the run game was struggling. And there were some games where it was good. There were some games where Ty Chandler kind of took off and Akers was kind of helping him as well, but then he got injured. Uh, but there were so many situations where it was like, yeah, short yardage, but mm, I don't trust the run game. I gotta, we gotta throw the ball. And in in, even with, uh, Backup quarterback, we're on to our third, fourth quarterback. We got to throw the ball, so it was a little. It kind of played mind games a little bit, and it was still a fairly a competitive team, even with all those issues. Uh, so adding Aaron Jones, you know, I think Chandler should be able to get better, and they have other guys as well. Um, they wanted to sign Cam Akers if he passed the physical, and then all of a sudden he signed. All of a sudden he signed with the Texans, so I'm assuming he didn't pass the physical. So they they could be looking for another running back, perhaps just in case there's some. Uh, durability concerns, but Aaron Jones, yeah, I, there's durability concerns, but he's still very much talent, uh, very much talented. We saw him in down the stretch for the Packers in the playoffs, like he was a problem. I know the Packers offense line is pretty solid, but and, well, that kind of brings me to the Vikings offense line. It's not the Packers offense line if we're comparing, but it's this might be the best Vikings offense line in in since the Brett Favre year where they went to the NFC Championship game, and it's not saying much. That offense line back then was insane, but it's not saying much. Since then, because they've had some very, very bad offensive lines over the years. And I, I think it's finally getting there. Uh, and we saw it last year. That's why I was very unfortunate Kirk Cousins got hurt. Because this is probably one of their better offensive lines in some time. And their tackle duo, one of the best in football. 
Brian O'Neill, very polished, very good. Christian Darisaw is taking over. He just got that big contract. There's a reason for it. He's still getting better. He has to stay out there for all for every single game of the season. He has some things that pop up, but now he's got his contract. Doesn't have to worry about that. Maybe he can kind of just go out there and play, but very good and only getting better. Um, once they had a Dalton Reisner, it felt like they were better last year in, t- in terms of the offensive line on the offensive line. And Reisner's pretty solid, really fits. Uh, Ed Ingram's only getting better young player out of LSU a couple years ago. Bradbury is the only spot where yeah, he, he, he hasn't had the best career for a first round pick for them but the unit around him is getting better so that definitely could help him but so it should be one of the better Vikings probably the best Vikings offensive line I think since you know for, for quite some time so that could help the run game the the passing game the whoever the quarterback is the balance of this offense so if you look at it that way it's like yeah it's just really uh, for offense it's just really on the quarterback it's just not playing very bad just or not playing bad just got to play average a little bit better than average they can do a little bit more damage and in terms of defense cornerbacks the issue but they might be able to hide a little bit of that because of how because Brian Flores the talent the depth the blitz the unique defense that they are so it kind of makes you think like maybe they could be a little bit better than expected because of that players to watch we kind of touched on some of these players already I almost put Jordan Addison here because uh, he really, you know, look at what Justin Jefferson did early in his career. Is Addison going to be him? You know, probably not, but um, he could really take that next step playing with Justin Jefferson and just being in year two. But we kind of, we, we know what Addison's capable of. We know he can be a very good receiver. Ivan Pace Jr. is definitely player, a player to watch. Was All-American at Cincinnati because he was effective in every category. Really effective as a blitzer. Uh, went on draft because he's undersized last year. And then the Vikings get him perfect under Brian Flores. And he plays fairly well. He plays fairly well for Minnesota. Now year two, um, you know, kind of just getting more used to this NFL game. Maybe put a little more size on. Uh, he's gonna. He already blitzed a shit ton. He's gonna blitz. He, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he led the NFL in blitzes this year. So um, could be a big time factor. Has more of a polished linebacker next to him. Blake Cashman uh, has a very effective edge group room, I should say. There, so it's definitely a young player to watch for. Um, he'll be pretty productive. Like that type of player he is. He'll get after the quarterback and he'll make plays. Um, so definitely a fun young player to watch. Number two, I'm going to go Jonathan Grenard. Big time pickup uh, from the Texans. Uh, been productive for the Texans, especially especially last year under D'Amico Ryans. Uh, and, and has to fill some pretty big shoes of Daniel Hunter, who's the star Vikings pass rusher for some years there. I, he's not as good as Hunter. I don't think he will be as good as Hunter. It wouldn't be, uh, you know, he could definitely be close, I, I suppose. It's definitely possible. Uh, but... Yeah, how will he be? You know, sometimes D'Amico Ryans makes those defensive ends look a lot better. It's a little bit different of a scheme here. It, it, he could look just as good because he's got good players around him. They have that blitz factor. It could open things up. I thought it opened things up for Hunter last year. Kind of got some free rushes. Uh, you know, so very curious about him. Fill, fill in that void. Fill in, the, fill in those shoes. A little bit of pressure. How will how good will he be in a different defense away from D'Amico Ryan? So some questions there. Um, still young, still has upside. So let's learn what his potential could be. Could could he have scary high potential here? Um, so definitely a player to watch. And then I I have I already kind of touched on it, but I have to put the car the quarterbacks up here. Sam Darnold, JJ McCarthy. Um, I, no matter which one played, I don't think there'll be that much of a difference. I I really don't. But yeah, it, it's something to watch here for sure. Like Darnold, maybe his best situation yet. Great receivers, great tight end. Good, should be a decent run game on improving offensive line. So how good he could he play? If McCarthy plays, is does he have uh, you know young struggles? It, you know Michigan kind of you know just pounded the football, opened things up for him. It's gonna be a little more complex now. Uh, O'Connell obviously wants to sling the ball. He wants his quarterback to sling it around, obviously. Uh, but you know, so do, does he? It, it, does he have that little bit of an adjustment period where it shows, or is he just a natural born winner and he gets the job done? Um, I think he has, he's much more mobile as people give him credit for. So that's the thing the Vikings really didn't have. They had it when Dobbs came in and that was a factor until it started to kind of get game plan for it. Cause Dobbs isn't the best pocket passer. Uh, McCarthy, you know, I think day one would have to be better than that. So could he be that much of a factor because he has a lot to his game? So just very curious about, uh, 
yeah, how these quarterbacks play in this offense, a really good situation, and, and how many snaps they play. Is it Darnold all year? I, I'm leaning towards Darnold starts week one now. When they drafted McCarthy, I was thinking McCarthy, but I'm hearing such good things about Darnold. Heard, heard good things about McCarthy as well. Um, but it is early to say. But I, I, my prediction right now would be Darnold starts week one. But how long does that last? You know, how how long does that last? How much do we see McCarthy? When do we see McCarthy? A little bit of a tougher schedule for a team that finished uh, third in the division too. So do they just not want to throw McCarthy in there yet? Um, do they feel like they don't need to hurry up and, and use them right now? I mean, it's not like they feel like they're wasting a first round pick because they had they got Dallas Turner as well. Um, you know, so they they could have him sit, but I think there'll be a lot of chatter, a lot of a lot of maybe ripping of. McCarthy or the Vikings if he doesn't start behind Darnold like he can't win the job over Darnold it's like one thing if it's Kirk Cousins still there so could that be a little bit of a distraction you know we'll we'll see I think that'll take place other people kind of hating on that situation but we will see games to watch I put the 49ers in week two and you know the the 49ers got to be heavy favorites in that one but uh, the Vikings played them very well last year. They beat them in primetime football Uh, Brian Flores' defense gave Brock Purdy a lot of issues uh, Brock Purdy was kind of having an MVP type season for most of the year, even after that, but up until that point for sure. And he looked very bad. Like he was very confused with that defense, the blitz, the different looks they were giving. So a little bit of redemption here. How does he look against it in week two? I think the blitz could even be even better for Minnesota, like we talked about um, this time around. But uh, and then Sam Darnold, no, knowing that offense too, that the, if he, I would imagine he's starting in week two, but who knows? Uh, so that actually could be an interesting game. Um, and then I like the Colts game in week nine. I think that's a pretty even matchup. I think, you know, most people think the Colts would be better than the Vikings this year. I think that's definitely possible, but just in terms of the matchup, I think both these teams might have a little more balance to their roster, uh, than people give them credit for really both the teams. Like they're only whole. I know the Vikings have a question at quarterback. I don't really say it's a hole. The Colts have a question at quarterback with Richardson. How quickly does he develop? Does he stay healthy? Definitely not a hole. The only hole on these balanced rosters are cornerback for both these teams. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, the Colts are going to be a physical team when they keep the ball underneath. They roll out Richardson. They run the ball. They're star running back a lot. Um, so the Vikings typically stop the run pretty well. They'll probably blitz the young quarterback. Uh, their weakness, I think, will just teams getting the ball downfield against a, a weaker cornerback group. The Colts, I don't know how much they'll do that. Um, and then the opposite, yeah, the Colts defense should play fairly well against, uh, you know, whoever's that quarterback for the Vikings. So I, I think it's a pretty damn even matchup. That's a fun one to me. Uh, and then the Falcons got to put the Falcons. I, the Falcons got a much better roster. Uh, even though the Vikings roster is pretty solid, they're just kind of missing the star player. You know, their 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 quarterback who is on the Falcons. The Falcons got a very deep uh, or balanced roster, so that you know the but O'Connell knowing Cousins, Cousins knowing O'Connell, that offense it should be pretty interesting game plan and game. Uh, so that should be a fun one. Uh, fans takes Antronop, thanks for the fun series. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. It was a lot of fun, something different. Um, temporary running back fix with Aaron Jones. Yeah, it definitely should be a fix, but. Yeah, how healthy will Jones be? Skill position players staying healthy. Yeah, they they got pretty depleted. That's the thing. Like they had that mess at quarterback switching quarterbacks. You know, their their quarterback got hurt. They had injuries like crazy. You know, Hawkinson went down at one point. They just dropped the whole roster, um, and they were still competitive. So if you look at it that way, they, they should be pretty competitive, right? You know, they're not going to be the greatest team in the world because they still have a question at quarterback. It's a little bit of work in progress, but. Um, but yeah, they, these guys got to stay healthy. You know, Hawkinson, when will he be healthy? Aaron Jones, question with him. Uh, Darisaw ha- had some time, uh, some games missed throughout the last couple of years. Um, you know, and, and um, you, you look on the defense, they're already kind of getting beat up at corner. Um, you know, so it, it's very important for these guys to stay healthy or they're just, they're going to struggle. Darnold versus McCarthy, we kind of talked about it. Edge rotation improvements despite Hunter loss. Yeah, we talked about that too. It's just uh, something that people kind of don't realize. Like they lost Hunter, they're missing, and it's still, it's going to hurt them a little bit. Like, because he was a tackle for loss leader. He was a star pass rusher for them. Texans get a good one there. But uh, they have a deep group. They're a little more balanced in terms of the edge, and they can maybe do a little bit different things with Turner's ability to drop in coverage. Uh, and he mentions Dallas Turner. Uh, and Ivan Pace, we talked about him expanding from 23. He's definitely a guy to watch. Second, Secondary play, depleted unit. It's Byron Murphy, and then 
you know, Shaq Griffin, who actually I thought I heard he rolled his ankle or something, so I think he'd be okay. But Shaq Griffin may have to start. Um, and then I haven't been a huge fan of a Caleb Evans so far, but he's got playing time for a young guy, so maybe something kicks in with him. Um, they're probably gonna have to add someone. They have some other young guys on there, but it, that is a tough group. Uh, but the the and then kicking stability. Uh, they add Riker from from Alabama. They draft him. Very good kicker. I'm not a huge fan of drafting a kicker, but a very good kicker. If there was one you were going to take there, I guess that would be the guy. Uh, Greg Joseph kind of hurt them a bit. Extra points seem to be an issue for them. Um, you know, so they 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 should be able to get better at kicker, but it's always a mystery with these young rookie kickers. And sometimes they're sometimes they struggle and they're just done. That's it. They were look so good in college, and they're just awful in the NFL, and that they're done. Uh, and then sometimes the rookie young kicker, kickers look really good. Like, all right, like Blair Walsh look really, really good. Uh, and then all of a sudden they fall off the face of the earth. So it's always a mystery, especially when it comes to Minnesota. Daniel Carlson looks awful right away. They have to cut him because he cost them games just really bad. And then he's one of the better kickers in the NFL for the Raiders. So uh, – a lot of teams haven't had the best luck. It's definitely a mystery, but the Vikings have been one of those teams with some very, very bad luck when it comes to kickers. So kicking stability is a good talking point. Aiden O'Connor, uh, secondary is likely going to be a big-time issue. We'll lose them games. Uh, yeah, I'm not really worried about safety. Harrison Smith definitely isn't getting any better, but he's still that smart player and a factor, and Metellus and Bynum are getting better and better. I'm not worried about safety. Um you know, at all, their job could be a little harder because the corners aren't that good. Um, again, we kind of touched on this video. The blitz could make the corners look better than they are. Uh, and I do like Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy is a very solid corner. He missed some games last year too, though. Another guy. Um, the blitz can make them, I think for the most part, it'll actually make them look better than they are, but it don't won't make them look great, obviously. But there could be times against really good quarterbacks where the blitz isn't a factor because quarterbacks get the ball out quick to open receivers because the corners aren't that good. So it definitely will hurt them a little bit. They definitely should add someone. I think it would be worse if it was a different type of defense. Like if it was like a pure man coverage, no blitz, or if it was like a cover... Um, yeah, it's just really any other defense. I think they they know that they can hide the fact that they have a, they're a thinner at corner. But if we're talking huge games like games to, you know, if they were somehow like trying to make the playoffs or like if they somehow were in the playoffs, like th- th- it'll hurt them. It'll hurt them big time and something like that. Um, JJ McCarthy is getting overlooked by most. The offense has potential to be scary good if he plays well. If he gets the chance, yeah, we will see. Can Grenard play up to his contract? If not, pass defense will be very, very weak. Yeah, we kind of talk. He's an important player, like players to watch. He has a lot of pressure on him. Like he has to fill the holes of Daniel Hunter. And if he's underwhelming, if he's not the same guy from the Texans, they'll still find ways to get pressure with Dallas Turner and. Uh, Van Ginkle and the mainly the blitz, but if he's not playing right, it, it'll it'll be a hit. It'll hurt a, uh, a bit. It'll definitely they'll definitely take a hit there. So good point, uh, Adam. When will JJ start over Darnold, and how will he look in O'Connell's system? Yeah, that's kind of we touched on that a little bit. Aaron Jones, Ty Chandler rotation. Yeah, Chandler, Chandler looked really good. It was a guy that I liked a lot out of North Carolina. I liked him when he was at Tennessee as well. Uh, and he looked good. He, there was times last year where it was like, why isn't he getting the ball more? Why is Madison getting carries? He looked that good. He's not really an every down back, maybe because of his build, uh, but he has that home run ability, can catch the ball. So I think it's a perfect situation behind Aaron Jones, and they don't want to overdo with Aaron Jones. So I do think we'll see a bit of Ty Chandler. Uh, will we see Bo Richter and Gabriel Murphy, two players who definitely should have uh, not gone gone undrafted? Um, yeah, it shows the edge depth. Uh, two players that I really liked as well. I wasn't surprised Bo Richter went undrafted. He really wasn't talking about anyone, but, but I felt like I was one of the only guys. I'm sure there was other people, but talking about him, he's a unique player. Felt like an and- I had a comparison to Andrew Van Ginkle, and he ends up playing under Brian Flores, who coached Andrew Van, Van Ginkle, and they signed him too. He's there. Uh, so it could be a unique player. Uh, and Murphy was definitely too talented. I know the reason he didn't get drafted is because he's severely lacking arm length, which is important, which is huge. But he's a guy that lined up in different spots, and he just got in the backfield. He disrupted. So I, I, Murphy, I, 
Richter might it might be tough for him to make the team because he's such a tweener, um, lacking arm length as well, and they have those types of players already on the team. But Murphy, I, I you know I think he can make the team, and I think he could be he, he could be part of that rotation. Um, so that should be pretty interesting. They're they're deep when it comes to edge. They are deep with young players. How much will the secondary struggle? Yeah, this is a big question. Does does the Brian Flores' blitz game and the edge group uh, make them look better than than they are? Uh, or do, does the corner group make the blitz in the pass rush game look worse than they are? Because on paper, it looks like it could be really good. Uh, that's the question. Do they? I think they got to add somebody still. I think they probably will. Uh, take Vikings finish, finish four and thirteen. I think they'll be better than their record, especially offensively. Secondary loses them games. JJ McCarthy shows lots of promising things. Yeah, on paper, they're definitely more talented than the four and thirteen. They do have a tougher schedule. It felt like than I expected, given that they finished third. Um, they were a team that that dealt with a lot of durability issues last year. And typically it just, for when it feels like there's a lot of teams that have that, right. When it, when it feels like when teams have that, it, it goes on for like a year or two or three, they, it kind of goes in, in phases. Like the, the teams that were like three years ago, there was teams that were on a stretch of just being unlucky when it came to injuries and that kind of passed. And there's kind of these new teams. So they were so beat up and it kind of felt like a new guy was getting hurt every week. And, Hawkinson right at the end of the year that um, does that kind of continue into this year. It's definitely possible. So um, I, that's kind of a worry for me, like on why they could win, you know, they can finish very poorly, but if the, everyone's healthy and out there, they're probably too talented where I didn't where I think they win because of the blitz game. I think they win because of their star weapons at receiver, tight end, running back, and the improve the star tackles. Um, I think they win could win games solely off those things, where they should win much more than four games. But um, if the quarterback, put, I mean, Darnold's been bad in his career. Like if he's still bad, which is very possible, or McCarthy just, you know, being totally different for him, you know, that that could lose them a lot of games. Of course, so we will see. Uh, but that'll do it for the Vikings video and this series. We had a lot of important things to get to before the season starts. But check out that playlist on the channel if you're looking for a specific team. Uh, can't wait for the upcoming content. Top 100 in the works. Uh, Going to go over things covering every NFL team within one video. Uh, and then my final predictions and more. Cannot wait for those weekly pick That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.